O people of Zion, behold, the Lord will come to save the nations, and the Lord will make the glory of his voice heard in the joy of your heart. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Today we celebrate the vigil of the second Sunday of Advent, and this Mass is being offered for the intentions of Kim Nicholson. This being the vigil of the second Sunday of Advent, we light our second Advent candle. Unfortunately, because of lockdown, we couldn't be here to see the first one lit. And the first one lit is to represent the prophet, who, the prophets who, who spoke of the Messiah to come. And the second is known as the Bethlehem candle. It represents the journey of Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem. In our first reading this evening, we hear the prophet Isaiah asking us to prepare a way for the Lord. St. Paul tells us in our second reading that we should always be ready. We do not know the day or the hour when our Lord will call us home. So we prepare ourselves. We get ready for when he will come. And so to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins, trusting in the mercy of God. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son. But may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Console my people, console them, says your God. Speak to the heart of Jerusalem and call to her that her time of service is ended, that her sin is atoned for, that she has received from the hand of the Lord double punishment for all her crimes. A voice cries, Prepare in the wilderness a way for the Lord. Make a straight highway for our God across the desert. Let every valley be filled in, every hill and mountain be laid low. Let every cliff become a plain, and the ridges a valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all mankind shall see it, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up on a high mountain, joyful messenger to Zion. Shout with a loud voice, Shout with a joyful messenger to Jerusalem. Shout without fear. Say to the towns of Judah, Here is your God. Here is the Lord coming with power, his arms subduing all things to him. The prize of his victory is with him. His trophies all go before him. He is like a shepherd feeding his flock, gathering lambs in his arms, 
holding them against his breast and leading to their rest the mother ewes. The word of the Lord. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy and give us your saving help. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy and give us your saving help. I will hear what the Lord God has to say, a voice that speaks of peace, peace for his people. His help is near for those who fear him, and his glory will dwell in our land. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy, and give us your saving help. Mercy and faithfulness have met, justice and peace have embraced, Faithfulness shall spring from the earth, and justice look down from heaven. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy, and give us your saving help. The Lord will make us prosper, and our earth shall yield its fruit. Justice shall march before him, and peace shall follow his steps. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy, and give us your saving help. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. There is one thing, my friends, that you must never forget, that with the Lord a day can mean a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord is not being slow to carry out his promises, as anybody else might be called slow, but he's being patient with you, wanting nobody to be lost and everybody to be brought to change his ways. The day of the Lord will come like a thief and then with a roar the sky will vanish, the elements will catch fire and fall apart, the earth and all that it contains will be burnt up. Since everything is coming to an end like this, You should be living holy and saintly lives while you wait and long for the day of God to come, when the sky will dissolve in flames and the elements melt in the heat. What we are waiting for is what he promised, the new heavens and new earth, the place where righteousness will be at home. So then, my friends, while you are waiting, Do your best to live lives without spot or stain, so that he will find you at peace. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Prepare a way for the Lord, make his path straight, and all mankind shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The beginning of the good news about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It is written in the book of the prophet Isaiah, Look, I am going to send my messenger before you. He will prepare your way. A voice cries in the wilderness, Prepare a way for the Lord. Make his path straight. And so it was that John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. All Judea and all the people of Jerusalem made their way to him, and as they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, they confessed their sins. John wore a garment of camel skin, and he lived on locusts and wild honey. In the course of his preaching, he said, Someone is following me someone who is more powerful than I am, and I am not fit to kneel down and undo the strap of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Now, I I love that... um, 
that image from Isaiah, that they, we should prepare a way for the Lord. And he says, every valley will be filled in and every mountain will be laid low. Now, what happens if you fill in valleys and you lay mountains low? Well, you have a, a level ground. There's, there's no longer a distance, a, a massive distance between yourself and another place. See, Isaiah sort of had the, this image that, that we would one day live with the Lord in harmony. And it's something that, that I think we all have in our hearts, that desire to want to be close to God and with each other. And that's Isaiah's powerful image, that every valley will be filled in, every mountain laid low. Why? Well, that, that means there'd be no obstacles between us and the Lord. And that's what we're trying to do in Advent it's one of the, the reasons why we celebrate this, this great season. We look over our past year and we say, where are my, my valleys, my, my holes, if you were? Where have I found myself? Where have I put myself? Because of what I've said or done, maybe. And I find myself in the bottom of a valley, a bottom of a hole. And I want our Lord to come and pick me up and take me out of this place and put me on level ground. Or maybe you have that powerful image of the mountain, like, like sin. Your sins maybe become like your thoughts and your, fa and your failings, maybe you feel like mountains. And maybe at the end of this year, you want our Lord to cut those mountains down. Now, we know that if you try and sort of get from one place to another, and there's mountains and there's valleys, it takes ages to get somewhere. But as soon as you, you, you have level ground, it's a lot easier to get from one place to another. And that is what our Lord wants for us. And he wants to do it for us too. Now, when we come to the Lord in reconciliation, and he forgives our sins like mountains or maybe we find ourselves in those deep valleys what does he do see we very often have an image of a of a stern kind of strict god who just loves to tell us off and yet that's not clearly in our in the bible no at the end of that passage from isaiah what did we hear that that god is like a shepherd and you've got that very tender image in Isaiah where he says, I want to wrap my arms around you. He says, Isaiah has this image of God being like a shepherd who gently wraps his arms around his sheep and pulls them to himself. It's a, it's a beautiful image, a very gentle image. And I think that's what God wants for each one of us. And that's what happens in confession Confession is like getting all the obstacles out of the way. It's like filling in those valleys, flattening those mountains. There's nothing between us and our Lord. I love what Pope Francis says of confession. He says it's not a torture chamber. And he said it to priests. Priests, if you're waiting for people to come into confession so you can torture them because of their sins, forget it. That image of our Lord wanting to, to remove any obstacle between us and him so that he can wrap his arms around us. I think that's more my image of who God is and what happens in confession. Now notice um, in our gospel today, John the Baptist is baptizing people with water for the, for the forgiveness of sins. And it's a kind of a a run-up, shall we say, to a Lord's baptism. And what happens at baptism? Well, when we are baptized, we're made uh, one with Christ. We're grafted onto him. Any sins, either original or personal, are completely forgiven. We're like, it's like we're washed clean. That's why that, 
that we, he uses the symbol of water. It's like being washed clean. And that's what it's like going to confession. Certainly for myself, it's my experience. It's like we've been baptized again. We're completely new. It removes our sins. It washes us clean. That's why we use water as that, that symbol for baptism. But water is also a very powerful thing. We see that, don't we, in tsunamis. It can sort of sweep things away. It's very powerful. And that's another powerful image, I think, for baptism. It removes our sins. It completely wipes them away. And that's what happens in confession. It's like we've been baptized again. We're washed clean, and it removes our sins completely. Now, you might be sitting here there thinking, here he is again, the Catholic Church speaking about confession. It just makes me feel guilty all the time. And I think actually the church in the past probably did make people feel guilty a lot of the time. But that's not my purpose here. But, the, but I do think, and I was speaking to our converts, we've got four people coming forward who want to become Catholics this year. And we've been meeting on Zoom meetings. And we were talking about um, uh, confession. And we were talking about uh, the church sometimes making people feel a bit guilty. And I said, yeah, I, I do think sometimes we overdo it and we have overdone it in the past. <clears throat> but I would defend guilt. I think it's a good human emotion it should be there. It's only psychopaths and, and uh, very damaged people who don't feel guilt. It's important that we do, because it tells us that we've done something wrong. It's like when we feel pain. Pain can be uh, very, very uncomfortable. It's something we don't really want, but it tells us that there's something wrong with the body. Well, guilt in some senses, in a lot of senses, is that emotion that tells us something you've done something wrong. And it brings us, please God, to God. Now, if it tips into shame, where we, we don't feel guilty about what we've done, but it makes us feel ashamed of who we are, then maybe we've gone a little too far. It's the difference between guilt and shame. Guilt is, is where we feel guilty about something we've done. Shame is, is, making, is, is that very negative emotion that, that, that makes us feel ashamed of who we are and who we've become. And sometimes that might be necessary, but probably not for the vast majority of us. But I would say, if you do feel any guilt or, or even, please God, if it, if it happens, shame, there is a, a great way that we can be reconciled with the Lord. And that's through the, through the powerful sacrament of confession. Now, I, I also see reconciliation, confession, a little bit like this. If you've ever said or done something to a close friend or family member, and you're out of sorts, you know what that feels like. You don't feel quite right until it's set right. And it happened to me recently with a very good friend of mine. Sort of fell out during the year, and, and um, only very recently we've sort of got back together, and the relationship has been healed. And it was only after that happened I realized that's what was bugging me. That's why I was losing a little bit of sleep. That's why I didn't feel right. Well, that is certainly true of our relationship with God. And I think confession is a great way of healing that relationship if we feel we've damaged it this year. And what an awful year this has been. And many people have felt, because of the, the strains and the, and the pressures of this year, that it's brought them to a place they don't want to be. Well, in Advent, we are called to prepare a way for the Lord. And what better way than to come and be reconciled? So, the last thing I want to say this evening is that I am making myself available to you half an hour before this Mass, and half an hour before each Mass on the weekend, so I can hear your confessions before Mass. But also, I will be available after this Mass for a while to hear your confession, if you so wish. And so, remember the great words of the prophet Isaiah, who yearns for the shepherd to gather the lambs into his arms once again. 
the dream of Isaiah, that every mountain be laid low and every valley be filled in so that we can once again be friends with our Lord. Amen. We stand now to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we await with longing for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, let us with renewed devotion ask his mercy. That Christ may visit his holy church and keep watch over her always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That Christ may fill the Pope, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops with spiritual gifts and graces. Lord, in your mercy, that under the protection of Christ, our times may be peaceful. Lord, in your mercy, that Christ may banish disease, drive out hunger, and ward off every affliction. Lord, in your mercy, that Christ may find us watching when he comes. Lord, in your mercy, and we seek the intercession of Our Lady, the untire of knots, as we say together, how Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Almighty, ever-living God, who brings salvation to all and desire that no one should perish, hear the prayers of your people and grant that the course of our world may be directed by your peaceful rule. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Amen. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from all my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merit to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We use the second Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other the sign of peace.
his mingling with the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul. The body of Christ. blood of Christ. Jerusalem, arise and stand upon the heights, and behold the joy which comes to you from God.
Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. If you please be seated. Just a, a few notices. It's lovely to see you here uh, this evening uh, and that the message has got out that we can once again uh, gather for public mass. Let that be the case uh, forever because uh, I've missed you. Um, many of you will know that we now have a live stream uh, camera uh, which means that you can access mass uh, here when it is said and also just maybe, maybe click on the channel and just spend some time in quiet um, in, you know, with, uh, on, on YouTube watching the, this, the sanctuary live but it's saying mass here on my own it's just not the same so it's lovely to see so many of you here today now, many of you will know uh, that, uh, of course, uh, we are having to put more masses on uh, over Christmas because uh, we are expecting, of course, a, a larger crowd than normal. So you probably know that at 6 p.m. on Christmas Eve, there'll be a mass over at St. John Fisher. And then here, there'll be one at 8 p.m. and then one at 10 p.m. too. And then in the morning, of course, Christmas Day, 9 a.m. over at St. John Fisher, and then 11 a.m. here uh, too. Now, for the Christmas Eve Masses, you'll have to book. So if you haven't booked and uh, you want to come to one of those Masses, then please do so and call us or email us. Um, if you tell me immediately after this Mass, it's likely I might forget. So please just email me or phone, phone us and uh, we'll, we'll book you in. Now, you probably know as well that there's a new parish website so we'd like to thank uh, uh, Mick McGurk for doing that for us. Um, but uh, uh, the old uh, website is still there, but there's a link there to the new one, so please do so uh, if you haven't done already, and just uh, have a look at that. So I think it's a, a nice new uh, website. Now, on Sunday, the 20th of December at 6.30 here at Sacred Heart, we're going to light all of our candles in the church, and uh, we're going to hear our choir sing. Now, as you probably know, you, we can't sing, unfortunately, together in a church. Uh, the government haven't allowed us to do that yet. But with social distance, with masks, and everything else we need to do to keep our choir safe, they will be singing for us at that uh, service, but also over our Christmas masses too. So it's going to be a bit difficult because it's going to be <clears throat> fantastically difficult, I think, because to hear things like Silent Night or, or O Come All Ye Faithful and not sing along with our choir is going to be difficult, but it's the only way we can do it and be legal and safe. Um, so that's where we are at this time. I'd ask you please to keep in your prayers uh, Elaine Gallacher, who's passed away, uh, and for her family at this time. A funeral um, will be on the 15th of November, so please keep her and her family very much in your prayers. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. And may her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. So just another reminder, too, that I will be available for confession immediately after this Mass, but also throughout Advent, half an hour before this Mass, and for the 9 o'clock over at St. John Fisher and the 11 o'clock also here at Sacred Heart on the Sunday mornings. I stand now for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended.